Welcome to the new video of discrete mathematics series. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe it and watch all the videos in the sequential order. In this video, I will talk about what is proof by contradiction and I will also talk about proofs of equivalence of a statement, right? We have started about the proof by contradiction in the previous video, but I just uh, started and that video I completed so let us start it again to avoid any confusion so uh, when I talk about proof by contradiction what we basically mean that uh, we suppose we have some statement to prove then suppose we have some statement P to prove then we can start with negation of P and after following a set of uh, rules or a valid argument we arrive at a contradiction so how do we arrive at a contradiction uh, we actually arrive at a contradiction by showing that two statements R and negation of R are being true simultaneously right so if we are able to reach to a situation where negation of P implies R and negation of R which is basically a contradiction then that proof strategy is known as proof by contradiction let us understand it through multiple examples so I take the very first example where uh, I am considering that we need to show that at least 4 of 22 days uh, must fall on the same day of the week so if our statement is that at least 4 of 22 days suppose I say that our statement is that at least uh, 4 of 22 days fall on the same day of the week right this is our statement P okay uh, let us call this a statement P so what is negation of P negation of P is that at most uh, four uh, three days not four at most three days of 22 days fall on fall on the same day of the week right same day of the week uh, please pause the video and uh, be clear that what I have written now if negation of P is suggesting that at most three days of 22 days should fall on the same day of the week so total there are seven days in a week and if I consider that every day is falling at most three times so the total number of week that will result into is 21 days right so here we are getting a situation that when we started we started with 22 days of the week under consideration and if I am taking the negation of P I am arriving at a situation where at most we are getting 21 days so we are getting a contradictory situation what is the contradictory situation that if R is the statement that 22 days are chosen then I started with the statement R that 22 days are chosen but we are also arriving at a situation where we are able to show that at most 21 days is possible so we are arriving at a situation where R is also true because we made the assumption and negation of R is also true because we are uh, you know proving that at most 21 days are possible so R and negation of R can't be true simultaneously so we are arriving at a contradiction and hence we can conclude that uh, there will be at least four days of any 22 days that must fall on the same day of the week right so this is how we uh, construct the proof in case of contradiction let us look at this example quickly so if I have to prove that root 2 or under root 2 is an irrational number then I take the negation of this that let under root 2 is a rational number is a rational number now by definition of a rational number we know that under root 2 must be equal to a by b where b is not equal to 0 and there is no common factor 
common factor between a and b between a and b right this is our assumption there is no common factor between a and b now uh, i am going to write that a is equal to under root 2b a squaring both sides i will get a square is equal to 2b square so if i look at this statement a square is equal to 2b square and let us call it 1 we can show that a square is an even number why it is an even number because a square uh, can be written as twice of something so if a square is in an even number then a is also an even number uh, we can prove this by method of contraposition if you intend to prove it you can try to write a proof by method of contraposition so if a is also an even number it means a can be written as twice of something twice of t where t belongs to the set of integer right now uh, from 1 from 1 what we can write from 1 we can write a square that is 2t whole square is equal to 2b square so this gives me b square is equal to 2t square because it will become 4t square and then it will cancel so this gives me that b square is an even number right b square is an even number so this implies that b is also even Again, the same argument that if b square is even, then b is also an even number. So, here we have shown that a is also an even number and b is also an even number. And in the beginning, we have taken this uh, assumption that a and b do not have a common factor. So, if I consider this statement as r and the conclusion that we are drawing that a and b both have a common factor both have a common factor 2 factor 2 because both of them are even so if both of them have a common factor 2 means this is the negation of R so why we are getting this let me continue here because we don't have a space so if I am starting with the negation of P that root 2 is a rational number we are arriving at a situation where we are coming across two contradictory things. One is that R has R does not have any common factor, means this statement R where I am considering that A and B do not have a common factor, and this statement negation of R where we are showing that A and B do have a common factor. Right. So this is a contradiction. So why we are getting a cont contradiction? Because we have started with the wrong assumption that negation of uh, you know p or that root 2 is a rational number so that uh, conclusion is that under root 2 is an irrational number and that completes the proof i hope you are getting it if you have uh, understood it fine otherwise pause and play the video again okay so let us take one more example fine so here the problem that i have that give a proof by contradiction of the theorem that if 3n plus 2 is odd then n is odd so what is the strategy that we are following we are following the strategy that I will consider the negation of this statement so here the statement is like uh, if 3n plus 2 is odd then n is odd but before I write the negation be clear about how to write the negation of it because sometimes a student find it uh, confusing so I'm going to first understand how to write the negation of this statement and just to understand this suppose I say that we have two statement p1 uh, that is uh, 3n plus 2 is odd and we have another statement p2 that is n is odd now the original statement given is p1 implies p2 so if I ask you what is the negation of P1 implies P2, so what will be your answer? You have studied the laws of equivalence, that is negation of negation of P1 or P2. Do you remember this law? P1 implies P2 is negation of P1 or P2. If you uh, have watched the previous video, you might have seen this law which I have proved that this is negation of P or Q. So what will be this? This is negation of negation of P1. Now I can use the De Morgan's law. So that will be like P1 
and negation of P2. So if I ask you what is the negation of this statement, so the negation of this statement is that 3n plus 2 is odd and see th this is P1. So P1 is what? 3n plus 2 is odd and what is the negation? Negation is a and n is even, right? What is the negation of P2? If n is odd, the negation of P2 is n is even. So this is how you write the negation of this statement. So this is just to explain to you so that you understand the things. When you have to write the answer or when you have to write the proof, this part is something that you can ignore. You can consider the solution from here. Uh, this I have just explained so that you understand that what do I mean by the negation of this statement. So let me write it first. So I will write that let, uh, I am writing the proof now, that let 3n plus 2 is odd and n is even, right? Just looking at this you can realize that what will be the negation of this statement. So n is even means what? If I look at this, n is even means I can write n is equal to twice of t where t belongs to set of integers. So what is 3n plus 2 in this case? So so 3n plus 2 will be 3 times 3 times 2t plus 2 and from this I can take 2 common so I will get 3t plus 1 and that is equal to 2 times s where uh, basically s is nothing but 3t plus 1 and it is 2 times s uh, so uh, this is also an even number, right? This is also, let me write, so this implies 3n plus 2 is an even number, right? Uh, here you can write, I wanted to write it, that s belongs to the set of integers. So let us look at the whole argument again. I took the negation of this statement. What is the negation of this statement? that let 3n plus 2 is odd and n is even. That is the negation of this statement. Now if n is even, then n will be equal to 2t. And if n is equal to 2t, then 3n plus 2 will be 3 into 2t plus 2. That is equal to twice of 3t plus 1. t being an integer, uh, you know, this 2s uh, can be written because uh, I am considering this whole 3t plus 1 as s another integer. Now 3n plus 2 is an even number, right? But here we are also assuming that 3n plus 2 is odd. Are you getting it? Here the assumption was that 3n plus 2 is odd and n is even. But when I am taking n is even, I am getting 3n plus 2 is an even number. So we have, we have a contradiction. We have a contradiction. And why we are getting a contradiction? Because I have taken the negation of this statement. Why we are getting a contradiction? Because I have taken the negation of this statement. So I can write here because there is no space I am writing here. So so uh, we proved that we proved that proved that if 3n plus 2 is if 3n plus 2 is odd then n is odd. We reached to a contradiction. Why we reached to to a contradiction because we made the uh, a presumption that negation of p is this uh, true right so negation of p is true so we are getting a contradiction so uh, you know p is true and what is p that if 3n plus 2 is odd then n is odd i hope you got it right uh, in the beginning i told you that i will be also talking about uh, equivalence but uh, now uh, the equivalence part i will be discussing in the next video right because otherwise it will become too long so if you are new to the channel, please subscribe and thanks for watching. Have a great day.